So why now that I have a disability, it's gross that he finds me attractive because I have a disability. I'm beautiful, my disability is beautiful, and it's sexy. How'd you feel when you saw it? I think I cried. You sometimes forget to sit back and think, shit, yeah, I just did that. I remember waking up and the only thing I wanted to do was just check to make sure they amputate the right leg. (laughs) (laughs) I remember the day after when they took it all off, there was like the dotted line with the pair of scissors. I shit you not. (laughs) That is gangster. Yeah. Like a permission note. Oh my God, I love it. It was literally stamped on. I had difficulty with actually identifying as someone who had a disability. Mm. Disability comes along with all this negativity. I should be shamed. People felt sorry for me. People felt sad for me. And realistically, I never changed. Mm. I've never been one to sort of want to sit there in what my stereotype is. I just want to be me. I'm James. I don't even, I always forget how to introduce myself. Uh, Maybe start with your first name last night. Yeah, James Parr. That sounds nice. Um, I'm 26. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm a baloney amputee. I am a model disability advocate and uh, a writer. And I was about to say, triathlete. lots of lots of writing I going know. on at the moment. You're yeah. killing it with the articles. Thank you. Do you enjoy doing that? Um, I'm not going to say no because I do. It's just hard for someone with ADHD to sit down and actually write. But you've got some um, big publications that are publishing your articles about mainstream representation that well, bizarre. Harper's Harper's bizarre. bizarre just Look did one yeah for disability Man, pride awesome. month yeah it's <laughs> sick I, I think it's great because they sort of come to me they came to me for something else and they're like oh you know just like if you have any other ideas I'm like well actually it's disability pride month so why don't we sort of do something around that and i had done something for um pedestrian tv with disability pride month but again i don't think the story should stop there i think you know more, more increased representation and voice we interviewed you previously. Uh, we were at a music festival called Beyond the Valley. Shout out to Beyond the Valley. who had a podcast stage and had listen able. But Gar- Angus, mm. as our, you are our audio guy. Didn't yeah. get up. No, tech issues. Um, so we just considered it one of the great run-throughs. A rehearsal for this day. There was, another, there was another thing going on that day. Do you want to get into that? What was that? You know, it might have been a couple of seltzers flying around. Oh, you look, to be perfectly honest with you, was it our best interview for either of us? No. No. Uh, well, I was about to say, is this... The best way if you let me down and say it was crap. No, no. honestly, it was audio. I, I can actually I promise you kidding. the audio, there was a yeah. glitch in the audio, but no. So to say the three of us had had maybe a couple of beers and we maybe went on a few tangents. I remember walking out on the stage and I was like, I'm actually quite lit. Yeah, you mm. were, look, I'm being nice. You were the lit one, not us two. Yeah, we were uh, professional. We yeah. had a seltzer out there. We had a rider, which we had a was- rider. Um, we all get stuck. Remember the rider? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is our, that was our run through and this is our um, mm. legit one. And for people who don't know what a rider is, it's just, you shouldn't, and neither did we, and it became very exciting for the fact that we got to ask what um, food or booze we wanted backstage, and yeah, we had a few Newtowners, uh, some young Henry beers out there, and a bunch of seltzers. That was such a good three days. James actually went home with you and realised his past worked, and did you come back? I came back. I love that. Yeah. For the last one, yeah. yeah. We had a great day. James just recognised, so this AAA years. pass gets me, or artist pass, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like, was this like, gets me, and I was like, wherever you want, for three days. And James exactly. was like, I'm going to make that two-hour gonna, journey back here. I'm coming right. to say Dom Dollar and Nelly Furtado. I love yeah. it. Can I also talk about something that we discussed in the car ride on the way back from that day, which has now been out since? True. Uh, Calvin Klein model. Crazy, hey? Very cool. Yeah. Very insane. But can you talk about what that meant for you for arguably the biggest, you know, loungewear brand yeah. for, for men at least, and well, shivers, of course, women. Yeah. Um, people. To, to be asked, people, to be asking yeah. you to come on. Yeah. Insane. I remember I had uh, worked just like a little bit, uh, you know, when you start out as a creator of some sort, um, do like little gifting things here and there. And Calvin Klein was always my dream. So I had always turned down underwear opportunities um, in modeling just to always keep that door open. Not that I ever thought it would ever be a door that mm-hmm. would open. And then so when they were like, who do we talk to? I was like, shit, how like that has to happen. Um, it was a global campaign for Pride. And I think the best part about it is that Obviously, I was a model who had a disability, but it wasn't the big amplification of the story. It was just me there, which is, I guess, the most important thing because if you amplify it, you're talking about or making it known that you're there to do diversity or representation without just doing it. And that's how it was done, if that makes sense. Yeah. How'd you feel when you saw it? 
I think I cried. Good. <laughs> like, I just had some like happy tears. I feel like because I've done this work now, like modeling and stuff for about three to four years and only the last year taking it on board full time and it's like my main source of of work that you sometimes forget to sit back and think, shit, yeah, that, I just did that brand or I'm on a billboard or like that's cool, especially for people who have a disability and we don't see that often. Let's talk about your disability. It's not a disability you were born with. You are a below leg, below knee below amputee. Knee, yeah. Below leg. Below leg. Um, below knee amputee. And it was That's no leg. from cancer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I lost my leg below my leg. No, <laughs> um, my leg leg amputee. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, how long's a piece of string? Where does it start? Yeah. Um, but it was, you had cancer uh, yeah. as a teenager? Yes. Well, I was 21. Okay. 20, 21. Um, osteosarcoma. So bone cancer. Um and it happened just like really randomly. I was working at a special school at the time and we were playing cricket. There was a plastic cricket bat that just like brushed the side of my ankle so softly. And I had fallen over and it took me like a minute to get back up. That's how much the pain was. And then from there, moving forward, it sort of just alerted me to this pain um, that kept increasing. So I went to the doctor, told me calcified ligament. There wasn't much I could do went back after that. I was like, no, I need to do more. Like it's just getting worse. And then, so she said, um, I went to another specialist and then he diagnosed me with an osteoosteroid, which is another tumor that's benign. And then waiting list for 10 months to have that removed. And then in the 10 months is just like where it just got worse and worse. I think like every four hours I had to take, I was like overdosing on Panadol, but like I had to take Panadol and Ibuprofen at the same time every four hours because once that pain hit, it would take like an hour for it to just die down. And yeah, so eventually I opted to go to a private hospital to have um, the removal of the tumor that they thought it was. And yeah, I guess the second that they got it up on the CT scan because it was CT guided, they saw that it was cancer um, and yeah. Did you know that the leg was, when you went into the operation, did you think they were just removing the tumor and then you came out without a leg? That operation, they just took some more samples. Okay. They called me the week after. I was like, you have cancer. Um, so I went back, did three months of chemo. And they said in the chemo, we'll just kill it off a little bit and then we'll be able to do a bone graft. But in the three months, I guess the pain got worse and worse as well. Um, and it ended up just growing around the whole ankle joint, resulting in the amputation. How do you feel when you found out that you were going to, have an amputated leg i actually had come to terms with it i just knew what's going to happen um i feel like when i was even diagnosed with cancer i just like was like okay this is my path this is where i'm supposed to be um every time you would google the cancer would always say amputation and i guess even though it wasn't presented as an option or what would have happened i i don't know i just feel like deep down i just knew it was going to happen and i guess um the increase of pain and all that sort of stuff i had actually come to um acceptance with it when i went into um the surgery that day i oh, well, not the surgery but the surgery appointment and he said we're gonna have to amputate i was chill mm. difference between accepting and the reality of having an amputation um how do you think did your mindset change or no. after the surgery you were like cool this is life now yeah how do we, how do we move yeah. forward? fantastic wow so chill i remember waking up and the only thing i wanted to do was just check to make sure they amputate the right leg oh. <laughs> <laughs> so my sisters were like fueling me with like horror stories did you make like, them like thanks. yeah draw no, no, the no, 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 they no. do it like this. they do that anyway so yeah. like yeah. i've yeah. had this an leg. amputated but like i let her show it a rico yeah. and it's like this arm, like yeah. it's so they like write on a huge particular. marker mm. i was like wow they're like yeah because we legit yeah. You do so many. And what then, happened? And then even at the end of the leg, I remember the day after when they took it all off, there was like the dotted line with the pair of scissors. And I like, I shit no you not. <laughs> that is gangster. I wanted to, yeah. Like, you like, should get that Yeah, like at the kids. end of like a permission note. Oh my yeah. God, I love it. Was that. It was literally stamped on. Wow. I love that. Um, but yeah, no, it never changed. I think, um, you know, after the amputation, I sort of went home a week after. I went to CrossFit three day, like 10 days after the whole, the whole surgery because I was just bored at home. Um, I never had pain from a week after. Um, so I not even I, phantom pains? Very rarely. Yeah. Every now What's and then. What's a phantom pain, Angus? Phantom pain is sort of the 
uh, brain imagining that the leg is still there. So feeling um, sensations of your leg being in pain, even though it doesn't good, exist. Good Shout brain. out to our boy Seb Steele, going through some stuff at the moment. We love you, man. Very good there, but just the brain doesn't recognize that it's actually gone. Yes. Yeah. yeah cool. So, um, so it will send a pain signal to issue a response yes. as well. Yes, and then we'll, 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 give, we'll give it to him. <laughs> oh, well, okay. oh, no, 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 no I love info. it. No, yeah, I love more a more bit info. of additional. And then I also recently learned about mirror therapy. True. So mirror therapy where you put a mirror against your leg that's there and so your your um, your eye line looks down so it sees two legs and that helps with alleviating the pain of phantom. So, what? Yes. Yes, yeah, so you put a mirror next to your, you know, existing leg. Uh, instead of the one that's not there, you see two legs, and it sends triggers from your brain, wow. even though you can you know what's happening because you've put the mirror there. Um, that's but cool. it helps. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. Mm. Yeah, you can learn something new because then because it's flipped on the mirror. Yeah, it mm. actually really does look because like it's your... flipped. The outside looks like a real leg. Love yeah. that. There's some cool very facts. Impressive. Um, but you didn't need any of that, which is no. Yeah. Okay. I I think also like from my experience because it was I was chill. Yeah. Um, I think it. I personally think that it also comes down to probably a mindset when it comes to phantom pain, um, which everyone has their own experiences in that. Yep. And, you know, every doctor I've ever spoken to are always confused that I don't have it. So I've just like personally thought a long time, um, thought on my own, maybe it comes down to that, to that mindset yeah. of okay. positive thoughts. That's your experience. Throughout your journey of having your disability, have you come has there come times when you struggled with it struggle with looking different yeah fitting in or even employment or or in your yeah. social life yeah so i think the only thing that i did have difficulty with was you know it was covid when i actually finished up my whole chemo and went home um i just started working again and then we went into lockdown and i think in lockdown was when it really hit me hard i had difficulty with actually identifying as someone who had a disability mm -hmm. um because i think well, you would know disability comes along with all this negativity. I should be shamed. People felt sorry for me. Um, people felt sad for me. And realistically, none of, I never changed. Hmm. And, and you didn't feel those perceptions no. around you that other people so, might have been? Yeah. I feel like those perceptions were pushed onto me. Yeah. Okay. And so it was really hard to like balance. And I think during COVID, when we were in isolation, was the best time for me because I had to really unlearn my internalized i guess ableist thoughts and redefine what disability meant to me for me so as i didn't feel those perceptions and um you know so that's when i started moving into modeling and sort of speaking because i thought well i'm in a really good um position here because i've just gone through acquiring a disability there are people who grow up with that feeling their whole lives and um you know sort of trying to really help rewrite the narrative of what disability means for other people, not just for me. It's awesome, man. I remember I said to my friend once, just randomly, and I don't know why I said this, so it like, feels weird to say it, but um, one of my best friends, I said to her one day, I was like, oh, would you ever date someone with one leg? She said, yes. And I was like, would you say yes three months ago, which is obviously when I had two. She says, no. I was like, shit, so if I can change one person's mind, maybe I can change other people's. Not about just dating, but just like the perception. In general. But a lot of people with disability, it takes them years to get to that point, decades. So For sure. Yours is a pretty quick progression. What do you put that down to? I just think mainly just the ability to to prove people wrong, maybe. Mm. Because I didn't want... I've never been someone to sort of, you know, as I'm like bisexual and I'm also Indigenous, I've never been one to sort of want to sit there in what my stereotype is. I just want to be me. I tell you what though, James, what is interesting about that, um, your friend talking about that experience of, you know, would you date someone without a leg? No, not before I knew you is it's, it's, I find every single time we talk about something like this or, you know, with a guest, it's just the fear of the unknown. Yeah. It's not that somebody wouldn't, it's just like how, what's the correct language or approach. And now they know you're, you're, you give them your lived experience. Don't treat me like anything else or don't put this perception 100%. on me yeah. and they're like oh cool so there's yeah. nothing changed here except no. maybe you know and i and i will always sit there and say do you know what i probably would have the same thought because we're just not exposed to it mm -hmm. the representation yes i worked at a special school who, where there were kids with multiple disabilities whether it was physical wheelchair user those types of things but one they're kids but two like you don't actually really think about it outside your realm until it hits you as well mm. and Again, media has such, um, rep like the way that they show disability is that it should be 
we should be shamed and we should feel negative and it is a sad thing. You think so? It's, even, even still? Even still. Pull out a children's book that has the disabled character. It's sad. Then they do something that an even able body person couldn't do and then it's all of a sudden we're happy. I think moving forward that that is changing and change. Slowly. But a lot of the existing content is still often, you know, around that unfortunately but you know well you're saying yeah. chat gbt as well i made or mid journey yeah. i had create these yeah, images of children with disability and they were all quite dark gloomy yeah. old school approach to you know this kid you know being by themselves in an old rickety chair in an unlit room um okay. that's the image that it automatically produced by me just writing a child yeah. with disability about to start school and just to add to what you said before around you know your friends saying they wouldn't date someone with disability i often hear that and i hear people go who are able to oh what a jerk that sucks it's actually okay as well right sure. like to normalize it like you'd rather be upfront and be like hey i don't know much about this and i'm struggling and you'd be like well do you want to work through it or do you want to go date someone else that's okay too what the problem is is when people don't admit it act cool but then have a negative bias or say negative things um around it i know that when you and i think it's the same as other people might think it's different and you no no you've just got to be inclusive it's like well you can't write someone else's story hasn't been exposed to something, you know, so it's, exactly. it's, it's just because society does that. It's not them as an individual. So it's up to all of us as society to change it. So individuals don't get impacted on that. That's bias. right. Yeah. Just again, rewriting that narrative. Yeah. What you're doing is really redefining what beauty is you as a disabled yeah. model, but especially people with disability. I know we talked about this as a bonus. So I think about Kim Kardashian using people with disability in, in her new underwear and everyone's skins. Like, yeah. skins, skins and everyone yeah. was like, gross like we just want to see people like us like to say when people aren't sexy and all that yeah. candace owen i think was the person that's, that's, who yeah, was pretty yeah. much against it got a bit of love for that what we said on that one that was good yeah. um and w what are your comments around that i mean i know you and i are really passionate about it but to the naysayers are like look this is just woke bs and i just want to see normal people wearing normal mm -hmm. things what do you say well we are normal people so we should be included <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's not normal if we're not included um and i guess she has that thought because previously she hasn't seen it and that's not what is normal. So mm -hmm. that's the point of being there to redefine. Um, yeah, I remember seeing that. I'm thinking mm. yeah. that's why you think it. I also am wearing underwear today. Are you wearing underwear? Yes. Are you wearing underwear? I exactly. am wearing So why underwear. would you not want to see someone like you wearing underwear? Because <laughs> you buy it. Exactly. So it's not just the social element. It's the 100%. business case around I also well. think media and fashion has also really shifted in the last couple of years, especially after COVID to having more of a personal um, story to the brand or to the p models that they use. So personally, like I know when I look at brands now, if there's sort of no connection there, I'm not going to buy from it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, you know, we're living in a consumer driven world. So we need to have relate relatability to the brands and to the fashion and down to the models that they are used. So if they're um, not catering to that, I think people, they're going to be missing out. And again, we're like, a minority group, one of the largest minority groups. Also, anyone can be a part of at any point. I'm pure example. If you're not including us, you're going to miss out on a large opportunity of consumer consumerism. Mm. You well said. Awesome. Man. Jeez, he's good. It's annoying. <laughs> Gosh. It's bloody good looking, talented. It's got oh all the God. right lines. It's bloody, I'm in trouble. Let's talk about your prosthetic, <laughs> if we can. Yeah. Um, do you, when it comes to the options of prosthetics, do you get a choice in the skin color or tone of your prosthetic leg because i don't think i've ever seen one that isn't just the pink mm. the pink kind of yeah. pigmentation is there these days the options of like you know maybe if someone let's say a tradie leaves his legs on a construction yeah. site and he had a full leg sleeve tattoo can he get that yeah. Yeah. FMEU flag on there all right? <laughs> that's right Yes, you technically can get whatever you want. So I oh. personally just go black because it sort of goes with everything. If I wanted Dylan Alcott on my prosthetic, I could get you printed on well, my I mean, prosthetic. I mean, I'd have to clear copyright trademark, but for you, <laughs> for you, you can get a nude, right? But do you know uh, how much it would cost? <laughs> cost oh, me a leg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I go, I'm pretty good at that. No, that's very yeah, cool. Yeah, I was waiting for that. I was glad I was thinking that. Yeah. That was very good. Yeah. But yeah, but... You're right. Some people might want a pole. Some people might want like a carbon fiber yeah, yeah. look. Mm. And it also depends on the budget of what you can afford. Can you explain to people what your prosthetic looks like? I mean, I could give it a shot, but you're the best person who sees it. Yeah. Um, whoa. It's really just like a large drink bottle. Yeah. <laughs> but you've also. And then there's like a pole. You've I got a metal pole. Up. Yeah. yeah oh, pretty pretty it's like I have pants on. So, you know, I know where the camera is. But yeah, camera obviously that's where my whole leg is. We have the pole. 
and then the foot. So in that, I actually do have a cover that can go over the top. So it's not just a pole. It's sort of like a real life leg shape. What's that cord from your stump area oh, to your true. foot? So this is a pump. Oh. It doesn't like, it doesn't sit oh, there going. Oh, air to suck it. Yeah, like it, it. It just um, holds the air in so that there's no air going in and out. So there's, a, the there's, of, a, there's a big pole which connects the foot to the um, yeah. cast where your stump goes in. But just for people who can't see this because yeah. audio medium yeah. um, and our blind and low vision friends, there's a cord connecting your foot and where your stump goes in and it sucks the air out to keep your leg in. Yeah, it just keeps the, um, like the air combined so it's not going up and, and down. And a stump yeah, is, that. for anyone that doesn't know. Is what, the got, end of my leg, really? Leg yeah. Yeah, yeah. So does every prosthetic look like that? It's just, if I imagine someone going for like uh, the look of what their leg might have once looked like, that's like a cover around that pole. Yeah. And there's oh, also, I guess, okay. different different level of need. So if you're yep. not someone who's very active, it's going to be a different foot to mine. If you're someone who's very active and wants to run, generally they give you mine, but there's also like a uh, blade. You're the blade, Oscar yeah. Starris. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Careful. <laughs> yeah, guess, but there are options. Like, guess, on the, guess on the podcast next week. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. You can personalize like a lot of Paralympians get Australian flags like oh. yeah. imprinted on stuff like that. Yeah. Not my vibe. You can, but you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You, you can like, you can put any design, like your favorite band or whatever. Okay. Yeah. There's a bit of, there's a bit of leg culture, isn't there like that? Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. do you get you the, can, who designs these then? Like if my process is so. It, printed. It, it's like printed, like you print on a car. Oh. Yeah. So it banner. just needs to be on a print. Yeah. And then so again, if I want to Dylan. <laughs> Mm. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> can we do um, this? It just needs to be like on a on a on a t shirt, which you can just get printed. Oh, on a print. exactly that's so. really interesting. It's very know. similar, yeah. Yeah, shorts versus pants. There's this idea that you know, um, I know that Curtis McGrath wears shorts because it's not about being proud of his disability, but he's not here to not hide his disability. Yep. If that makes sense. He also lives in Queensland. Makes it oh, a yeah. lot more accessible to wear shorts. Um, for you as well, do you? Is there a thought process between getting changed that day and like, but if you don't want to get asked questions this day, let's say you got a full on day. So I was about to say that. So um, no, there is generally no thought process. I still sometimes work in schools Yeah. as much as I want to show the kids and teach the kids. It's quite exhausting. And they okay. also, they don't listen. They, will, you, they can't learn because obsessed with you. Like, they yeah. ask 10 different times. And, good on like, and so, I, so I will wear pants. Why? Just yeah. yeah, what happened? Yeah, why? And then when I, if I was wearing shorts and then come back in pants, like, oh, did your foot grow back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I love that. That's <laughs> good. Yeah. 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 So uh, there's just like a challenge there to sort of keep going over the same conversation. So, for example, um, that scenario, just wear pants because it's just easier to sort of keep that out. Yeah. But um, I think above knee amputees as well, the knee joint when it bends gets stuck in your pants and stuff as well. Oh, like, yeah, oh. true. And it like chews your pants up because it's like a yeah. hinge. Mm. Yeah. yeah that, I've just known that because one of my teammates had it. And that is yeah. a real yeah, short. Like yeah. 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 What about changing your shoes? Is that a pain in the backside on your fake foot? I'm actually pretty like chill, custom to it. Mm. Yeah. Like I know at Fashion Week, we, like I've had a minute and 30 second to oh, put cha to, to, to a whole change. Because you can't flex your heel on your non no. your foot. Yeah, so you know what I mean? Because like, you, you, you flex your heel to get your shoe on, Gus. Because one of my mm. feet, my heels, what do you call it? Um, hard adjust. No, no? it's it's um, fused. So I can't oh, hard to put one of my shoes on because I can't be an ankle. Same as your foot. Yeah, your yeah, foot. yeah. I, I've just gotten so used to it now that I can do a change and yeah. that quick. very quickly. Yeah. What about when you got to get changed real quick? Fashion week. That must, do they give yeah, you more time? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's I've hard. done a 90-second yeah, change, which was from a track suit no, from a suit into a track suit. And so the second I got off, I was getting naked. And um, as soon as they tied the laces, it was time for me to oh, go. Mate, so that's gnarly. Quick I, tight turnarounds. Yeah. Is your, is your leg falling off ever on a walk, on a catwalk? No, but I sort of wanted to. Just you should do it accidentally, like accidentally. I know. Yeah, in a viral moment. Don't put it in there just in case. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> we, did, we did not say that. That's not going to happen. No. Um, but have you had any, you know, real life encounters with your leg when things haven't gone uh, to plan or, or, you know, maybe you've, there's nothing? No. No, really? No, honestly, no. Like, how do you get stopped at the, when you have to go to the airport? Oh, I, oh I'm yeah. I'm just saying every day, yeah. like, what's what's different between my day and your day? Like, We're going to get a pat down at the airport. You're going to get a pat down at the airport. But how thorough is it? Because I don't want to say, like, if I was going to be taking something explosive on, yeah. somebody with a prosthetic. Mine's more thorough than his. The yeah. wheelchair is the full bung, bunger pat down. Oh, they yeah. go in. Well, oh, yeah. I just sort of stand there and they just do a pat down or they do the scan. You do the wand and then it's metal there, but the, yeah. the wheelchair one's the 
I reckon there must have been some dodgy people around time. They get stuck in the mm. auction. And they ah. do come down and sort of feel. But I wish they were educated on this because realistically, yeah. if you're going to be trying to hide something in your leg, you're not going to be able to walk. Yeah. Uh. So because there's yep. just no. We also get the bomb know. one in the wheelchair. They bomb check your chair every time. Really? Yeah, because it could be. It's for the mm, residue. Right. I guess yeah. I should be happy about that though, right? I'm, I'm slow down your day. I'm happy about it. I'm happy to get bomb checked. It means I don't get bombed on a plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, true. I'll take yeah. I'll take the hit for all of you. Yeah, I fly that much, right? Just to keep you. All, I'm keeping you all safe. All yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Feel better for it. Um, James, do you remember our ball of uncomfortable? Yes. We've got Let's different go. questions for you this time. Oh. Um, we've got one each. I'll go first. This is from Peter on Instagram because your job is very visual and your prosthetic is part of that. Can you claim your leg on tax? Great question. Mm. I thought about this about my wheelchair as I read it. Never thought about that. NDIS covers it? It does. So I guess no, but if I was wanting to get some modification so as it looked more, I guess, visually yeah. appealing or different to suit that, yes. You know why? I just thought about this because when you're on TV, you buy clothes and you can claim them on tax because mm -hmm. you're on TV. It's Beauty part of products. Job. Beauty products? Yeah. Why as a model. Why to do that? Yeah. That's yeah. Let's try and get some fancy wheelchairs and legs out of it. And just Dylan's going to be asking for some listen able B-roll of his, of his <laughs> from our cameras Hey, today. guys, please welcome to the project. Dylan Ogot, who's in a gold-plated wheelchair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the tax right oh, Um But I have, like, toyed around with the idea of, like, an artist painting it, um, oh. you know, and, again, I would claim that on tax because I would do it so as I could, for one. But, um, yeah, I guess certain, um, certain modifications that NDIS can't, if there was a way that it has to be monetized, then yes. But I guess it would be similar to clothes, beauty products, haircuts, those types of things as a model that you can claim in general. Does your disability, this is from Anonymous, does your disability make you feel more vulnerable? Um, do you ever get scared being out after dark? I have thought about it because um, I remember a couple of years ago where I was living, there was all these break-ins. And I thought, shit, if someone breaks into my house, in trouble. I'm going to have to chuck a leg on like mm. in two seconds, which it does take like 20 seconds at least. In that, I guess I was sort of scared, but no, not really walking home. I can still run um, personally. There's, you know, different um, below knee, above knee, different prosthetics, there's differences. Yeah. Um, for me personally, not particularly because I can still run. Plus it's a weapon, so come at me. <laughs> yeah, true. Like yeah. I have a metal leg, I'll kick you in the shins. It would be amazing if someone like, you know, you had jeans on and some like MMA fighter comes to take your wallet and all of a sudden he goes to the low leg kick and just breaks his own shin. Exactly. Yeah. Last ball of uncomfortable. Uh, there are a lot of people feeling empowered to get out there on different kind of apps we won't name it, but it rhymes with Shmanly Shmans, um, where there's a lot of money to be made, especially people with, with disability. Is this is something that you would ever contemplate going into? Look. Um, or are you on there? I don't know if you're on there. No, no, I'm not. I've thought about it, but I don't know. Yeah. Just, it's just not something. I have had people... Um, yeah, I don't know if people hit you up about it. Yeah, I have had one recently. I don't know if you saw it, my trip to Paris. Did you see that? I did, but I want to hear about it, which is so. Very good. Um, oh, well... Anyway, so someone offered me on Instagram a trip to Paris um, so I had an amputee fetish. Now, I wasn't particularly just amputee fetish. Sure, I'm not really wanting to go to Paris. and But I did think about it and I still yeah. did. And the was reason this on your close friends or was this public? Because I saw it. Public, but then close. Oh, I got the special one. Because no, okay, no, I was yeah, loving the special content. One, yeah. He's like doing the poll. He's like, what? He's like, it was the best. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So I feel like whenever I do that sort of stuff is to also advocate yeah, on it was Instagram. Great. And um, so when I was posting about it and sharing about it and talking about it, I knew it was going to be a very bizarre topic for people. And I wanted people to know about it. But the conversation I really wanted to have around that is because all I got were people telling me that it was gross. Yes, mate. And so... Because I saw all that. I go, hang on, like a guy, so a guy or girl's hitting on you. Like it's just normal. Yeah, I let it go. Because mm. I'm like, I want to have a bigger conversation around, but I want more people to say it. Because I want to see how many people have this perception. And then eventually I was like, no, nah, I'm not actually going. They did ghost me. So um, okay. whatever. But do you reckon they ghost you because I saw you doing the content? No, I blocked him. Uh, so okay. from the story. Good. The oh, you I was going to say, because I said, mate, you're giving up the free trip. you got no chance yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. How did they no. find you, do you reckon? It was just through Instagram. And they sort of said, you know, there's not many people in Paris all over the world. Yeah. And I saw you. And yeah, I think when people were saying it was gross, I then come back out and was like, no, you're actually calling me gross. And you know, people have 
I don't, I, I think for this particular individual that was talking to me and I did have a conversation around him because I'm not going to ever fetish shame or kink shame someone unless it's done in an inappropriate or a rude way where I was offended. I was just more offended that people were saying it was gross. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, he wasn't particularly fetishizing me. He was very respectful. He was like, I'm just attracted people who I amputate. Yeah. And you're an attractive and that's bloke as well. Totally fine. Yeah. And so when people come out and say it was gross, I'm like, no, you're actually telling me I'm gross. And, you know, everyone has a fetish. Everyone has a kink to some degree. There's going to be something mm -hmm. there. The people you're attracted to. So why now that I have a disability, it's gross that he finds me attractive yeah. because I have a disability. I'm beautiful. My disability is beautiful and it's sexy. I agree with you on that. Like I've had the same thing. It's like, why is it gross? Because they want to have sex with me. It's like just straight yeah. up. Like, why yeah. is that gross? No. And you're like, and then people go, Oh, didn't think about it like Again, that. I and put that down to representation yeah. because it's represented in a way that we can't be celebrated, we can't be loved, yeah. we can't be beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, you would. Here's a a little side by side of why because you would have got responses after you kind of called those people out for calling it gross. They would have gone, "Oh no, I think it's gross that he's wanting to fly you out." But the reality is, we listen to rap songs all day about that. You know, Drake lit recently went viral about that girl in bed with him doing a podcast, and she goes, "Oh, can you fly me out?" he's like, yeah, I can do that. I've, you know, there's this whole stigma around like, you know, celebrities flying in, yeah. you know, people that they want to hook up with. And it's like, it's made into rap songs. It's yeah. turned into, you know, milli views on reels that go into the millions because Drake can afford to fly this girl out business class. Yet when somebody offers you that same opportunity, it's gross. It comes down to that connotation that having a disability is seen as invaluable. Mm. And then because I'm invaluable, am I... Um, Getting a take, target or taken advantage of exactly yeah people it's are thinking like, well, no. it's like hang on I'm, I'm the one in the power position here was it drake that tried to fly out is that what the scoop is? <laughs> there it is yes it was Drizzy Drizzy. Drake. <laughs> uh, well let's go i'll go do you think, i've got the number has he got a, <laughs> he got a wheelchair <laughs> finished too let's go <laughs> do you think that it's do you think that it's comparable that somebody could be attracted to men with mustaches that they can be con attracted to somebody who's a amputee i i do hmm. I, again fine line between fetishization and being attracted hmm. there's Again, you know, there's some people who can be gross towards yeah. it, sure. But again, I, I, do, I think it is comparable. Like, I know who I'm attracted to, so mm. why can't they be like, oh, yeah, I'm attracted to someone with their... Yeah, the reason they use a mustache yeah. is for that exact... It's just yeah. like, you know, I just... Hey, you, darling, yeah. you look great with a mustache. And it's like, exactly. cool. It's like, well, I'm attracted to you as a man without a leg. Yeah. Being an amputee. I totally think... I, huh. To me, that's comparable. When your mustache ever start again? <laughs> Yeah, look, the mustache here. I did attempt one in, in lockdown and it did not get the A-OK -okay from my partner. So she's right. not a huge fan of uh, any sort of Shannon old goatee. I tried one of those as well. Didn't get very far with it. So, okay. James, you wear a lot of hats, my brother. Yeah. What is the main hat? Where do you want to see yourself in a couple of years? What do you want to do? Um, so, so I think still being able to be, I guess, recognized for doing that work and um, merging it with fashion and um, still modeling. I don't know. I don't. It, it's also a career that sort of just came to me and then I went and seeked and it's just sort of forever evolving. I think just being able to be recognized to help rewrite that narrative for people with disabilities that is not shameful or sad or Don't gross. think you have to try too hard to do that, Bella, because you're yeah. already doing it. So just keep being yourself, yeah. I think, yeah. is the main thing. And also changing the narrative in a narrative in an industry that aesthetically is uh, not being used to people like yourself, Dylan, Lisa Cox of the world, and whoever is representing, you know, the minority that is disability on those stages. Thanks, Adam, you as a model, but that's not me. Well, Which I just is. was being polite. Jeez. I'll, I'll take it. Thanks a lot. Mate, thanks for coming on, brother. Thanks, no worries, Hopefully this recording me. doesn't work so I can have you back yeah. again. Amelia, <laughs> our producer, double checking. Are can, you recording? Can you delete it? Imagine if you hadn't pressed record. Are you We're recording? We're sitting here all day. We're all watching you. Oh. oh. Neil, see you have to wait and find okay. out. Love it. Thanks, brother. Love you. No worries. Love you more.